Hello friends, this is Growl. Shadowlands has been out for over a month now, and in this video I'm going to go over my thoughts on each of the healers. This isn't meant to be a rankings or a guide, just my overall thoughts on how each healer is performing and some of their strengths and weaknesses. This is mostly created from my experience and also from watching some of the top players on classes I haven't got a chance to push super high keys in. I think this video should be helpful if you're still looking for some guidance as to what to play if you're a healer. Also, if you're a DPS, it should give you a brief summary of the healers. Sort of like a how to heal tanks video. This could be considered a how to be healed video or just a bit more freeform. Let's get into it. So Shaman, I think, is the one that I have to talk about first. This is one that towards the end of the beta, it was sort of shaping up to be one of the best healers, mainly due to just their healing output. What separates Shamans from the other healers right now is it's really simple. They just heal the most. They do the most healing. And I think this is why you see such a dominance in pugs why people are asking for shamans. I think if you play any healer but a shaman, you've probably noticed a little bit of discrimination in group finder over the last month. I don't know when this, I, I was a little surprised. I didn't expect this meta to develop so soon. Shaman just helps people feel safe because it does so much more healing than the other healers. I don't want to say so much, but they have consistent healing output and also very strong cooldowns. You'll notice from the other healers, aside from maybe Druid, usually they have one or the other, either good consistent healing output or good cooldowns, but not usually both. I think that's part of the reason why Shaman helps keep everyone safe. I also think that Bloodlust is not to be underrated as well. Because of the nerfs to drums, a lot of people want Bloodlust in their groups. However, there are classes like Hunter and Mage that are pretty common, so I would be surprised if that was the only reason why everyone wanted Shamans. Shaman, I would say, is pretty easy to pick up, but it has a pretty high skill ceiling if you want to be using all of your utility properly. The one thing that isn't easy to pick up about Shaman is it has a lot of keybinds, but once you sort of get the hang of playing your class, actually healing with Shaman is pretty straightforward. All of the cooldowns are pretty strong. They do upfront healing and some healing over their duration. And just all of the healing spells are just direct heal big sort of spells. Shaman is pretty mana efficient right now. They don't have a lot of mana management, but they do have mana tied and the resurgence passive, which gives them a little bit of mana back. And overall, just doing the most healing means that they're going to run out of mana less. I found in keys 10 or higher with the pride buff, you will not run out of mana very often. Maybe the only situation is if you're chain pulling a lot into a pride mob, you may run into mana issues at the end of fighting the pride. The last thing about Shaman that's really good is they have an interrupt. So I think it fits really well into the meta right now. We're seeing a lot of really well geared DPS classes sort of dominating or sorry, range DPS classes. Stuff like Mage, Hunter, even some Warlocks, some Shadow Priests, some Boomkins. And while those classes do a lot of damage, they don't have a lot of mob control and, inter and longer cooldown interrupts. So having a Shaman being able to use your Slow Totems, your Cap Totems, and your interrupts all fit pretty well with this ranged meta. One downside to Shaman is that they don't have a good battle res. And you're seeing a lot of comps without a good battle res right now because Vengeance Demon Hunter is really popular. As a Shaman, you it's basically mandatory that you have Engineering and that you have a battle res if you're doing any serious Mythic Plus. Although in Pugs, you don't always see that and you run into the scenario where no one has a B res. One other thing about Shaman, and maybe I only feel this way because I play so much Druid, but they're really slow and immobile. They have one good defensive, which is Astral Shift, but... If you're if you're caught, you're basically dead. If you if you know, and as key levels go up, shaman's gonna become more of a liability where druid can escape out of stuff very often. Another issue is that they can only dispel curses, so not having a poison or a disease spell can be really annoying. There's a lot of tough bosses, such as the last boss in Plaguefall, where having a disease spell can be a, a game breaker. In summary, I think Shaman's really good right now. I think the way I talk about it, it, it seems like Shaman is the best healer by far, but it's really not. It's just, it's 
It's a very complete class in that its utility fits well in the meta, it heals a lot, it has good cooldowns. There's not a lot of downsides to Shaman other than, you know, the obvious ones or the things that it lacks that the other ones don't. However, I don't with the with the four percent nerf that was put in near the beginning of launch. I think shamans are actually at a pretty a pretty good spot right now. They're I would say above the rest, but not by very much. Next, we're going to talk about druid. My experience with druid, I haven't been playing it a whole lot. I've been mostly focusing on shaman, but of the last week, I started playing my druid a bit more, and I actually I was enjoying it a lot. This was the grievous spiteful week. And I still think Druid is really strong. Even though as a Druid you might feel like everyone's playing Shaman or Druid's not good. I see so many people come to my Twitch chat about, oh, does Druid suck now? Why are you not playing Druid anymore? Even though people are playing Shaman or other classes, I still think Druid is really, really good. If you look on the Raider IO leaderboard, they're still healing the highest keys. And I don't really see that changing anytime soon. Druids right now have a really high damage output, which is kind of interesting, at least in the highest levels. In low levels, you probably won't notice it too much. You're mainly just focused on your team's survival. But since all Druids in Mythic Plus, or most of them, are Night Fae, a lot of your damage comes down to getting a lot of Convoke the Spirits in offensively and using it for damage. So one sort of small innovation that's happened since my guide is a lot of druids are running Flourish now. Flourish gives you a minute and a half burst healing CD. And since there is a lot of burst AoE damage in Shadowlands, you end up having to use your Convoke defensively a lot to keep up with it. However, Flourish gives you that option to have another button to press if you start falling behind in healing. You can simply just layer a bunch of hots, plus press Flourish, and then... Not only are your hots going to stay up for a long time and you can essentially blanket everybody, but you can also save that convoke. And then, for instance, the, the most common situation is on the prideful affix. You can flourish at the end of the pride to keep all your hots rolling quickly and to keep up with the damage. And then that way you save your convoke and you can use your convoke with that pride buff to do even more damage. Another big question is... Feral Affinity versus Balance Affinity. I feel like Feral Affinity is a lot closer to Balance than everyone leads out to be. I see almost everybody running Balance Affinity in every key regardless of situation. The one upside to Balance Affinity is that its Convoke is better. I didn't point that out, but in a lot of my testing in beta, I feel like the Convoke from Balance does about maybe like 50% more damage to a single target and even on aoe it does better because of starfall so if you're in that situation where you're able to use your convoke offensively over and over and over throughout the whole dungeon i think balance affinity will be a better choice for damage in previous videos i've talked about feral affinity being better for damage and just the abilities themselves are stronger for damage also, you it requires less ramp time, not needing to set up eclipses and stuff, so you can just sort of go into Feral, apply a few dots, and then shift out. But the way people are playing now, I think you'll see a lot more balance affinity just because the whole meta of Druid right now is what separates them from Shaman is their damage is so high. So as a Druid, you want to use a lot of your convokes offensively, and if you're doing that, then running balance affinity is actually pretty good. Because even on AoE, even if you don't get to do it on single target, using it on AoE gives you a starfall, which will be, or almost always does, and it'll generally be a better outcome than anything you get in Feral. One thing about Druid, after playing a lot of Shaman that I have an appreciation for, is how many like instant casts you have and how mobile of a healer you really are. As a shaman, you have to plant and cast, like, basically all of your heals. Yeah, you have Spirit Walker's Grace, but as a druid, you're just, it feels so much more fluid when you're in the dungeon. Last week, Grievous, Spiteful, for example, you don't really notice the, the druid mobility in that. It just sort of feels normal, but being able to root all the Spiteful, being able to top people up through Grievous without standing still, and have, you know being able to kite the Spitefuls while topping people up, and on top of that, being able to travel form and wild charge to get away, even though you're in combat, 
compared to shaman which you're just in ghost wolf praying that your team kills the spiteful so that you can keep up meanwhile everyone is just a night fae and they're just like teleporting ahead and demon hunter leaping away and you're just like oh no i, I mean shaman it's not just a shaman problem it's essentially an everyone but druid problem druid has really good utility for pugs as well i feel like the while shaman has some good stuff i would say druid is still the king of utility having vortex typhoon if you're boomboxing soothe is really nice if you don't have that there's a lot of mandatory soothable mechanics in shadowlands dungeons at least in theater and like the other side off the top of my head i also think having a having a good battle res is really nice as a healer you can i don't want to say carry a group but you can contribute a lot by just staying alive and being there to battle res people in danger as opposed to if you're using if you're relying on the engineering battle res you in in a dangerous situation like let's say the tank dies it's a lot harder to run over in battle res as opposed to just a druid you can just knock it off in one cast so in summary i think druid is still really good i honestly wouldn't be surprised if druid is still the best healer just because even if their healing isn't quite on the level of shamans their damage is more their utility is i think more effective generally and i think we'll see a healthy mix of shamans and druids in the top keys right now next we'll talk about dis priest this priest was looking really strong on beta and then over the last month of beta and i think maybe even in live too it had several several nerfs going into it I've been playing Dis Priest mainly in raid, and I really enjoy it. Dis Priest is a really fun raid healer, but in dungeons, it definitely feels like you have to work harder to do the same pulls that you can do on a druid or shaman. It's still viable. I'm not saying it's not, but as a shaman or druid, sometimes it feels like you just karate chop all your buttons and it heals everyone. But as a Dis Priest, you really have to be precise with keeping atonements on the right targets using your dps when you have good buttons but otherwise you otherwise just using shadow men using your cooldowns appropriately it's just harder one thing that that's nice about disc priest is it has a high damage floor it's not necessarily the highest damage healer but even in like very dangerous scenarios you're still doing damage whereas druid or shaman it becomes not good to do damage and you sort of have to abandon it completely this priest can still pump out damage even if it isn't a lot it you know it adds up over time this priest is really good at like preventing damage they aren't they're by far the worst healer at just pushing the bars up and healing but they have really good damage prevention cooldowns rapture every minute and a half barrier and pain suppression are all good for the tanks and for the team in keys where there's a lot of tank damage especially fortified weeks just rotating in barrier pain sub rapture and just spamming shields on the tank you can make the tank feel really really safe so if you're playing this priest if you're struggling finding groups if it feels like everyone wants a shaman or a druid the main advice i can give you is use the things that you have well don't try and be a shaman or a druid be a priest use your cooldowns to make the tank feel safe use them at the right time so that your tank is always at, at full health or near full health as much as possible even if that means using rapture and spamming you know power word shield seven times in a row same with power infusion too if you're playing priest and you're not power infusioning on cooldown on the dps during their cooldowns then that's probably like then you're trolling you should when you go into a key as a priest and you leave your teammate should be like you know wow we don't play with a priest that often but that guy was able to keep us up and he did all that other cool stuff so i think that's where a lot of people might be struggling with priests as we see them start to fall out of the meta just a little bit there's still definitely some good priests but it seems like people are favoring druids and shamans over priests i think power infusion in general is just super underrated it's really hard to judge the value of it but using a haste steroid on a dps during their cooldown even though it doesn't like it doesn't reflect in what you do at all it it does a ton of extra damage and it makes them feel good too so just making your teammates feeling good and doing damage even if it isn't reflecting on your meters is something that can not only you know help you time keys but also help you get into groups one problem is that the dispriest damage has been nerfed quite a bit and I would say Dis Priest is not a high damage healer, which is kind of ironic because it's a damage focus healer. 
So you you're doing damage all the time, yet your damage isn't as high as like a druid or a holy paladin, which feels kind of weird, but it's just sort of how the class plays. Dispriest is really punishing if you fall behind or you don't use your cooldowns right. And just, it's just because you don't have a way to push people's health bars back up. You don't have that big cooldown that you can press that heals everyone for 90% uh, of their health or whatever. You have a boon if you're Kyrian, but I think most disc priests are playing Venthyr right now for raid. I'd be interested to see once disc priests are able to switch over to Kyrian and play boon. If they do that, I think to be honest, most disc priests from raid might just also make a shaman or a druid but i think once you get that kyrian boon and you get good at using that i feel like that's sort of your way out that you can push people's health bars back up if you fall behind this priest definitely has some mana issues if you want to do a lot of healing and damage you need to have quite a bit of haste but the problem with haste is that you will run out of mana you in a lot of situations you turn into a shadow men bot once you pop your big abilities for damage, you don't really have a way to push people's health bars back up. You can't just spam smite. A big mistake that I see is one, once this priest get the hang of doing damage and using atonements, they put atonements on everyone, they use all their damage, they need more healing, and so they're like, all right, let me just keep smiting until the atonements push their health bars up, but it never works. You have to just switch to Shadowman, and a, a good disc priest knows exactly when they can DPS and when the damage is passive and when they just need a Shadowman. But in general, you'll end up Shadowmaning a lot and you'll end up running out of mana, which can be frustrating. And using your mana effectively and not having to wait for drinks is pretty good because, again most of the team like the team that you're playing with is generally going to be used to playing be playing with a shaman or a druid and so they're going to be like you know what the heck how are you out of mana here but uh, you know it's just something that you sort of have to deal with as a priest so it you can definitely make it work as a disc priest it's not impossible but i feel like you have to work a bit harder and like power infusion and some of the tank cooldowns feel good but it just doesn't feel like it fits quite into the meta right now burst heal like burst consistent aoe healing is more required and that's more of what shamans or druids bring but i still think you can make it work with this priest if that's your thing so now holy priest i actually started playing holy priest and i learned it and i set up a holy priest ui it was something that i didn't expect to do that i i don't want to say i didn't want to do but either way uh but it's really good on one of the mythic bosses sun king so i ended up doing a lot of keys as holy priest and learning it so I can actually speak about Holy Priest now instead of just like glossing over it in my videos. Holy Priest is a very straightforward priest variant. Like, so you have Dis Priest, which is all about preventing damage. And Holy Priest is simply just pushing the bars up. So in lower keys, or let's say you're just learning to heal or you're not familiar with the dungeons, you have all that good priest stuff. You have the uh, power infusion. You have the mind soothe and grip and stuff. But it's way less punishing because you don't need to know when to use your cooldowns you just sort of press them as people's health bars go up holy priest doesn't really have any ramp or any damage prevention that is, so it's good for learning the dungeons in that way and its damage actually isn't that bad i think holy priest has a wrap for doing low damage but if you're not gearing mastery if you're you know aiming for crit verse with a little bit of haste for dps stats you can actually you can you can put out a decent amount of damage if you're trying to as holy priest you're not really that far behind and if you're considering power infusion your damage is just fine however not having a ramp or damage prevention is a blessing and a curse once you get to really high keys where there's just tons of damage it will not feel great you there'll just be some damage spikes where it will feel like there's nothing you can do about it because you just can't do anything to prevent the damage so you need like it sort of works in the same way that Dis priest does and that you need your team to be playing well to prevent the damage enough to not die so that your healing can kick in i think that's sort of why you don't see any holy priests in high keys if you're doing like you know anywhere from 2 to 15 or 16 keys i think holy priest is just fine and it might even be better if you're not that experienced but for really high keys it will it'll start to feel bad because you can't prepare for those really heavy damage moments like the best thing you can do is like put renew on everyone and ha like have your cooldowns re like be ready to press your buttons really fast that's really the only ramp that holy priest has 
And similar to Dis Priest, Holy Priest and Dis Priest both have like really, really weak defensives and bad mobility. You see Priest playing Goblin just to help a little bit with that, but in general, like I was saying Shaman's mobility is bad, but Priest is not very good as well. So I think if you wanted to play Holy Priest, you can get it done. I think I wouldn't recommend it for super high keys just because of that lack of damage prevention. If you're set on Priest and you, you're set on wanting to do high keys, I would probably recommend playing Disc. Second to last, we have Miss Weaver. I've been playing a little bit of Miss Weaver. I played it a little bit towards the end of beta. It was a little buggy throughout beta, so it's probably the healer that I played the least of all of them. I am finally starting to get my guy geared up and getting my legendary and stuff, but I'm definitely a bit behind. Miss Weaver is similar to Shaman and Holy Priest in that it's very, very straightforward with really good single target healing. Like if, if your tank is taking a ton of damage, you can just constantly pump like really heavy heals into them. Or if you have that one DPS player that's can't get out of bad, Miss Weaver is really good for that. The difference is that Miss Weaver doesn't have those really strong cooldowns. Their cooldowns are very situational in Crane and Revival. And in some in some places, they feel amazing. Like, for instance, on the last boss of Plaguefall, if you can Revival everyone and remove all the disease, it's just like, man, Miss Weaver is the greatest. <laughs> That's the greatest cooldown ever. But in most situations, Revival isn't going to be that strong. Miss Weaver's utility is a little different. You have to be more hands-on with it and have more knowledge of the dungeons to get good use out of it. A lot of its stuff comes from like leg sweep and paralysis and like stopping mobs using ring of peace. Like you're basically really good at stunning and stopping mobs. If you don't know what the mobs do, it can be a bit harder, but also sort of like what I was saying with priest about making your team realize that you know is is like if you're a really good miss weaver and you can know exactly when to sweep the mobs to interrupt a bunch of casts when your dps aren't able to kick or if you can do a good ring of peace around your tank so that he can kite when his mitigation's running low like people people will really notice that and that's something that other healers can't really do so try and make good use out of your utility that you have I think Miss Weaver gets a rap for doing kind of low damage, sort of like Holy Priest does. But I think Miss Weaver's damage is actually fine. It's just it, it is a little reliant on what comp you have. So you bring Mystic Touch, which is a five percent physical increase. So if you're playing with like Rogue Hunter and then another physical class, you actually are doing you're adding a ton of damage. It's sort of like Power Infusion where your your damage doesn't necessarily show up on your meters but you are meaningfully contributing which can feel kind of shitty but in practice you know it's there so if you're trying to make the class work it can work miss weaver definitely struggles with mana a little bit miss weaver has mana problems just because you don't really have a good way to manage it you have like mana t or life cycles but oftentimes it just isn't enough and especially with group healing miss weaver just isn't that efficient it's good for doing low amounts of burst healing. Like if you have renewing mists on a bunch of people and you need to like cleave heal. But if it's like equal damage on everyone, it ends up being a lot of vivify spam and you start to run out of mana quick. The one saving grace that Miss Weaver does have though is that Crane plus Kyrian ability or just Crane if you're playing Necrolord are actually really, really strong against Prideful and they don't cost that much mana if you're using your weaving abilities to get your free enveloping procs so you can actually heal a pride with almost zero mana even at a pretty high level if you have crane so that's really the one situation in high keys where you'll run out of mana is on prides but miss weaver sort of has that get out of jail free card where they can heal through a pride without mana so that is nice and i think as a miss weaver once you get into these 10 or higher is as hard as it is to get invited to them you will notice that your mana problems will actually be alleviated a little bit when you're leveling up and gearing up and you have to deal through the dungeons, especially with people standing and stuff and having to use Vivify and enveloping a lot more. Once you get into hierarchies, the mana problems will start to, they won't go away, that's for sure, but they'll they'll feel better. Um, One thing about Miss Weaver is you, you do want to be in melee to apply your Mystic Touch and to use rising sun kick if you're playing rising mist 
a lot of people have this differentiation of like oh are you a fist weaver or are you not but that doesn't really exist they're just talent choices and you know i don't think you should play like you shouldn't play miss weaver thinking i'm never gonna go into melee just because rising mist is a pretty strong talent and you need to be applying your mystic touch anyway but having you can run focus thunder i think especially if you have really low haste and it's a bad week for melee i think you you'll probably see all the mist weavers on the ladder running rising mist but i think focus thunder is just fine if you're having problems being in melee but that being said i wouldn't use it as just a cop out like you know don't don't be that healer that does you know oh i don't want to hit anything because as a mist weaver you don't have to do that much damage but it's still important that you're throwing out your rising sun kicks and applying mystic touch so i haven't really talked about the viability of mist weaver i think you can still get it done there's a there's almost no representation of high key mist weaver i there are a few people playing it i think that's just a consequence of miss weaver hasn't been that good in raid or mythic plus in a long time it's always been okay but it's never been the top so we're starting to see all of the miss weaver mains sort of changing to other classes over time i still think miss weaver is fine and you can heal really high keys especially because it's so good at healing prideful but there just there just aren't really people doing it so i wouldn't be I wouldn't be too discouraged by the fact that you don't see a lot of misweavers on ladder because it's possible they're just, you know, it's sort of like Holy Priest in that most people just switch to disc at some point because it's better. But yeah, I, I still think you can make misweaver work. I still think misweaver and, uh, and Holy Paladin are pretty underrated. A lot of people are saying like, you know, a lot of people want to construct this tier list where they put Holy Paladin and misweaver at the bottom. But I think that the tier list is more like, shaman and druid and then like everything else is pretty you know close together in the in the viable but a little bit more difficult category and last since this is going on longer than i expected we'll talk about holy paladin i've i haven't been playing holy paladin a whole lot i played him a decent amount on beta and i've i've been playing them a little bit on live too but i haven't done any super high key pushing there are some people who are doing it though i think one of the first ksms was ellis mir and the nerf team doing it so tons of gear isn't required and also there's a holy paladin right now i think his name is midway he's been doing keys like 18 to 19 level and he's been streaming a lot so anyone who's written off holy paladin or says that holy paladin needs to be massively buffed or that it sucks doesn't know what they're talking about holy paladin's actually pretty strong right now by far the biggest selling point of holy paladins is their damage their damage is so high it is so ridiculously high right now my so my paladin is probably my least geared of my my five or six healer classes whatever you want to say and it does the most damage like it even even if people are dying just the fact that you can always consecrate you're always hitting mobs using holy shock offensively like being able to if you ever have the opportunity where you can use wings and dps with pride you actually just do so much like you're actually doing dps levels of damage once you get good gear for it and that being said, I think Holy Paladin will absolutely be the meta healer at some point in Shadowlands. If you're, you know, if you're looking to buy low, if you're playing Holy Paladin, you're not sure if you're like, well, like I can stick it out for a little bit. Like you absolutely should, because there's almost no chance that Holy Paladin doesn't become the best healer at some point. A lot of people say that Holy Paladin scales well with gear, but that isn't completely honest. The reason that Holy Paladin does better with better gear is just because they struggle with healing. But as healing power overall gets improved, then as soon as Holy Paladins are able to heal the highest keys comfortably, they will just immediately become the best healer because they do so much damage. Right now, they have good healing during cooldowns, but it's really, really punishing if you mismanage your cooldowns. You have to be really precise with the way you use them. And it isn't just... It isn't just wings. Like, when I say cooldowns, I mean literally every single cooldown you have to be using bubble sack aura mastery lay on hands like all that stuff has to be used very very well there are plenty of times when like that like bubble sack is your cooldown for a, a high damage event and you just have to use it and it, it it's not that bad you just have to be ready to use your cooldowns proactively it can be harder if you don't have knowledge for the dungeons 
that's sort of why when people ask what healer to play, I generally steer them away from Holy Paladins and Dispries. It's not because you can't get the job done with them, but it's just because you need some level of knowledge to know when to use all your cooldowns to make it work. I think the biggest downside to Holy Paladin right now is you have to be in melee. Being in melee right now sucks. There's so many bad affixes like Spiteful, Storming, all that, you know, and a lot of mobs that just have Frontals or Fervents that target the melee if the tank is kiting. And as a Mistweaver, you can sort of get out of melee sometimes, but Holy Paladin has to be in melee always. You have to be in melee to do damage. You have to be in melee to use Crusader Strike to get your Holy Power back. People may tell you that there's a ranged Holy Paladin build. There's not. You always have to be in melee as a Holy Paladin. Not every second, obviously, but in general, you should always be in melee. And some of these affixes make it really, really hard. And I think that's... Uh, other than that, not just that, but Prideful too. I think Prideful is really, really tough on Pallies. Mainly because you have to use your big cooldowns for Pride. But I think that will be the tipping point for when Paladins will become good, either when Pride goes away, or if Paladins can simply heal through Pride without having to use their cooldowns, then, like, if you can just get a full Wings DPSing with the Pride buff, you're just going to do insane damage. That's not, you can't compete with that with any other healer. The best advice I could give you if you're playing Holy Paladin right now is... You need to help people understand how your class works and you have to be sort of leading in a way like you just have to be more assertive. It's not like as a as a shaman or as a druid, you sort of just like chill and do your thing and you heal more if people take more damage. But as a holy paladin, you need to sort of communicate to your team. Like, for example, let's say you go into a pride and you don't have a big cooldown like you. You have to tell them, OK, you need to kill this pride. Like we're going to die if you try and sandbag this and hold your cooldowns. Or let's say you're you're wanting to use your wings for DPS, let your team know like, okay, use health potions here. Like they might not, they might think they're okay, right? Because it's not that high of a damage moment, but you need to be, you need to sort of be coaching your team along the way with understanding how to play Holy Paladin just because you are like, you're just less popular, right? Like you're less popular and less flexible, I think, than Druid or Shaman. So you, you sort of have to make them work around you. That's sort of why I think you'll see a lot of people don't like to play with Holy Pally. It's not even so much that Holy Pally is bad, but like they would rather have a healer that works around them than working around their healer, if that makes sense. So yeah, it, it'll definitely feel tough, especially in pugs or especially if you're learning when you're playing Holy Paladin right now. But I think you can make it work if you really want to. And eventually, whenever Holy Paladins are going to be able to heal, whenever Holy Paladin healing gets easier, they're just going to be the meta healer and they're going to slam everyone. So that goes over all six healers over sort of my experiences in the first month from playing them and watching other people. There's still plenty of time for the meta to develop, but I think things will be pretty similar to this for a while. So I hope this video is helpful in understanding sort of my thoughts on the state of everything right now. I do want to wrap up by saying that I think healer balance is really good right now, even though I may have sounded opinionated on certain classes or others. Even if you see like one or two healers being very dominant in the top of the ladder, keep in mind that there are people making it work with any class pretty much, even if it's maybe not in the highest key, but just in one less. So if you enjoy the class that you play, I would, you know, keep playing it if you're a pug and you're looking at what healers to take. If a guy looks skilled and he looks good, don't be afraid to invite one of the the lower uh, image healers. You know, you'd probably I think with healers, it's more about player skill than class. So I think you'd rather have a a good a good disc priest or a holy paladin than a shitty shaman. But I guess I'm not pugging and inviting healers, so maybe I'm wrong on that. I haven't been uploading as much as I'd like over the holidays and release, but what I have been doing is streaming a ton over at twitch.tv slash yumitv, so be sure to follow me there. I'm going to start uploading again on a more regular schedule very shortly. Thanks for sticking with me, and if you're new here and enjoy the content, I'd appreciate it if you gave the video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading tons of content, mostly geared at Mythic Plus for all of Shadowlands. Happy keying!